So mm -hmm. the gospel, God's gospel that he wants us to really appropriate in us is love. So we're, we're just going to pray before we continue. And yeah. Father, I lift up your servant, yes, Father, your daughter, Reverend your Michelle, your as she brings the word and as she shares with us, as we share together, Lord. I just pray a fresh anointing upon her. And Lord, I pray a fresh anointing upon your people yes, as Lord. well. Yes, Father. And those on Zoom. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you will give us all hearts of flesh and uh, in exchange for our hearts of stone. Sometimes, Lord, we think that we have a heart of flesh, but it really is a heart of stone that we have. Lord, there are times that we say we love you, but Lord, we say it with a heart of stone towards you and towards each other. And Lord, I just pray that you would enlighten us, that you would that just affect our spirits, just come in and, and, and empower us with your grace that we would be able to love you the way that we are supposed to love you and that we would be able to love each other the way that we're supposed to love each other. God, you know that we're not perfect and God, you know that this is a difficult struggle for us. But Lord, through your grace, we can do it. And Lord, we desire to be counted upon those who are on the straight and narrow, Lord. And so with this message that we're going to hear today, Lord, we just pray that it would leave us changed after today and that we could truly be counted as your children who you love and uh, who you would speak to and that we would be able to discern your voice and uh, hear your voice and respond to your voice and respond to your promptings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And as we hear the word God calls us to love. There are two things. As rather sharing, love one another. For love comes from God. There are two things that God requires from his church. Without which we do not reflect being his church. And that's to love as Jesus loves. And to be holy as he's holy. Love and holiness are the two characteristics that without those two characteristics we can't say that we reflect being the church and as I'll mm -hmm. interject here and say that love from love will outflow naturally holiness because so it's not two different things if there's no love there will be no holiness because if it'll it be a fake counterfeit holiness mm -hmm. sorry make, no, no, sorry no, Rav. no no we, we, are, <laughs> we preached together before just not for y'all no what you're saying is true you cannot you cannot truly say you love god if you are not holy if you're not obeying him he says those who love me obey me so if so, you so which comes first love or holiness I believe that holiness is the fruit of the love of God that comes from God. And to, for it to come from God and for it to change us, we have to be sanctified. We have to be purified. And that's why one of the scriptures that would have been given, and we'll paste it in the chat, from Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart, O oh God. It starts with a clean heart. If your heart is of stone, as Rev says, your heart has to be of flesh. It's a work of the spirit. We're trying to figure out which comes first. The truth is, God first loved us. He chose us. Without him, there's nothing that can change because it's a work of the spirit. And that's why even if for the next 15 minutes, we wrap up what was said today. The fact is, if we don't love as he loves, and that means all those people you can't stand, that means all those people in your family that are driving you nuts, you have to choose to find a way, even if they don't respond. Because you will know my disciples by their love. But if you don't love him, you won't obey him. So there wouldn't be holiness. 
Because we can't say we love him and we are not holy. Because there are a couple examples I'm going to give you today to show you where we are so deceived by the fact that we're worshiping God, but we forget that there are those who said they spoke about worship and Jesus had to tell them, but you in fornication, what are you telling me about worship? John 4, the woman, the Samaritan woman, she says, she started talking to him about worship. And he says, but you worship not what you don't, you don't even know what you worship. Because the one you are with is not your husband. So you can worship in your head, thinking it's your heart, the true and living God, and your life is defiled. It's not possible. But you could feel it so. Because whether we get there today, I need to tell you, that's where Satan is taking us into counterfeit worship. Using counterfeit worship music and people in adultery and fornication producing this music and because we don't know the difference between gift, talent, and anointing. Anointing breaks yokes, y'all. Gift and talents don't break yokes. But it could sound good. No. I don't want to run ahead of that point that you're making because the biggest complaint is that the church doesn't love. Now, so you might say, how can I love that person when I don't even like that person? Anybody you know, understand what I'm saying? But there's a difference between love and like. You don't have to like the person to love the person. Is that, is that not so? It's correct. You can choose. So that unfriendly yes. neighbor that you have, that unfriendly unlikable spouse spouse well no not spouse <laughs> sorry i didn't mean some, to say some, that sometimes spouse <laughs> listen co-worker the, the venting that unlikable yes, family yes, member yes. you could still love you could still love in an authentic genuine godly way amen why are we saying this god spoke about there are many who believe they're holy and they're not. There are many of us that believe we love and we don't. So John 13, first, verses 34 and 35, another scripture that you hear us read often. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just the likable ones, as I have loved you, <laughs> that you also love one another. No, he didn't say that, right? He didn't say that. He said, love one another. Who is one another? Everybody, everybody. And that also means believers and non-believers. Do we hate our, uh, do we love our fellow believers but hate the unbeliever? No. Now, we might hate them from the point of view that they're an enemy of God because they don't accept God. But that's a different application of that word. We still love that person because we don't know when God is going to touch that person and that person will become a child of God and a believer. So we love everyone. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. And here's it. By this all will know that you are my disciples and that you are walking on a straight and narrow road to life and salvation if you love if you have love for one another. And, and what the word also says, from what our sister just sent here, 1 John 4, 17 to 18 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So we can be bold on the day of judgment and not fearful when we have perfected through the power of the Holy Spirit 
God's love in us and among us. So this is another scripture that we have to reflect on seriously because God said in his word to us today, render your hearts. Your heart has not been surrendered. We can think we love like this, but the truth is, if we love as Jesus loves, holiness will follow because he says, if you love me, you will obey me. Do you understand how it goes together? Do you understand it's okay to tell yourself today, I taught, I was right there. If he came now, I would go. I need to go and revisit, not in fear, but because if a parent comes and says, check up on yourself, X, Y, and Z, you're going to listen. Do not leave here today with an attitude of, I got it, I got it. They may not have got it, but I got it. You need to test what you have been accepting as love and holiness in your life. We've got to go back to the word of God. Romans 12, 9 to 10 tells us. We didn't plant this, eh? Let love be without message. hypocrisy. That's right. How can love be with hypocrisy? I think we know, right? When we tell the person that we don't like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love you. We're good. <laughs> yeah. And then behind their back, you stab them. You can't. And you backbite and you gossip. You can't. It, it, That's hypocrisy. You can't, y'all. You have to stop yourself and say it's not lining up with God's word. You can't any longer make your own rules because you're going to be left behind because it's only according to God's word and his word you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So even as God gives us another five minutes, I want to say something here. We are in the times right now where we can't go today, but I'm letting you know, they are, the red heifers have arrived in Israel for the preparation of the third temple. Now, you all know in Revelation, there's reference to the third temple. That's where the abomination, when the Antichrist comes and he fools people, including many of the Jews, what will cause them to know that he is not who he says he is is when he erects a, an abomination. We don't exactly know what it is in the third temple. Do you all remember in Revelation reference to the third temple? Okay. Well, to our knowledge, there's no third temple yet, but it's been a while now where they've been talking about starting to prepare the third temple. And there's a particular type of heifer that must be bred a certain way, must reflect certain things. It's not just any kind of red heifer. It's used in the rituals that they are going to do in the third temple. So they are already pre making plans for the third temple. Why are we saying this to you? Because that's how close we are in the end times. And God has come today to reinforce, but you're not ready. So let alone the fact that we don't know when the Antichrist will appear, we know it must be soon because there's talk of a third temple being prepared. How much more do we need to know? This is Bible prophecy. Why is this important? Because we are also in the season where God is saying, and I, okay, go so, ahead. So Rav is going to share a scripture, mm -hmm. but before she shares that scripture, this Romans passage goes on. Mm -hmm. Abhor what is evil. Let me back up. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. In other words, 
we spoke about love without hypocrisy. It's not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. That's not the gospel. So if someone is unkind to us, unfriendly to us, just gets on our nerves, or is actually blatantly wicked towards us, it doesn't mean to say that we treat them the same way. Because otherwise, this other passage describes that situation where... Isaiah 5.20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now that was the scripture, one of them that I was using today's message. And what we have been doing is we have been calling love what is not love. Holiness, what's not holiness. And we what we're doing is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's our translation of love. And the thing is, God says, whoa. And the thing about it is, we are deceived when we do those things, but when you are deceived, you don't know you're being deceived. But the only way you will know is through the word of God. So unless you are connected and planted and reading the word and praying and receiving sanctification where the blockages in each of us is being removed, we actually could think we are okay. We lag you down the place with people. The word of God says this, but it's okay for me to do that. The word of God says this is by your love. God says love. His disciples are known by their love. And somebody will say, you know, I don't feel loved by you. Say, but I love you. Are you going to tell me I don't love? I love. If somebody tells you they are not feeling love, they are not feeling love. You can't say you love. They said they don't feel the love. And that's why we need each other all here. That's why we need to be part of a community that will say, you know what? So, so, so. And you don't disregard it. Because what's happening here, as we gear up, in the times that we are in, we are in major decep deception times. This is the age of deception, okay? So I wanted to mention to them, what's, what's on your heart? What no, are you thinking? Okay. You listening? <laughs> yeah, listening? Yeah, I want to yeah. say to you all. As well, we, what I was going to say yeah. is that the continuation of Romans, um, verse 10. So therefore, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Kindly affectionate not roughly affectionate. You know, I love you, kind of thing, like what I can't yeah. do, like Mishnah Rav did, but. You can say it, you can say I love you. And all are given yeah. preference to one another. Yeah. And, and now, on the other hand, Rav, there are times when we would be truly trying to attempt to love the other person the way that we know how to love, but the other person is not receiving it as love. So that, that's when we have to speak the truth and love and talk about these things. And then sometimes we yes. also have to take into consideration that person's love language. But you, we need to understand that because of hurt in their life, their love language may be very different to ours. Yes. I don't want us to get confused. The thing is, someone may truly have been hurt by terrible words. And words is what is going to minister to them. Remember, Peter denied Jesus. And what did Jesus say? He went to him. Do you love me? He had Peter say three times, Lord, I love you, after he had denied him. You're hearing what three I'm times. saying? The words. So I don't know if that was his love language, but Jesus used it to help him to say the very opposite to what he had said earlier, to reverse those words. Saints, they had a conversation. They had a conversation. You can't go through life just cutting people off, putting up barriers. What if that person don't make it? Did that occur to you? What if you make it and they don't make it? Chances are if you don't speak the truth in love, you are making it because maybe you haven't forgiven. Maybe. Think about it. See if unforgiveness is linked. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we just don't know how to go about speaking to the person. But let it not be because of unforgiveness and bitterness. Now I want to say to you all because we said we are, it's been, God has been speaking from early, right? The message has been from since this morning. I want to say something 
to, like you have something on your heart. No, 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 you go All right, on. okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. I remember I pointed out to you, John 4, right? We're closing with this. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you, you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation of, is of the Jews. Aside from a whole exegesis we could do on, on, on that. Jesus said the words to her, You worship what you do not know. Now, she's talking worship, right? And what did God say to her? The man you are with is not your husband. Is it possible to be in sin, intentional, repeated sin, and really believe that we are worshiping God? Do you think it's possible? Oh, you come clean now. I'm not saying you're in sin. Do you think it's possible to believe I'm worshiping him? But I'm, 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 I'm defiled. I'm doing intentional. We're talking about repetitive intentional sin. Jesus had to bring it to her. Now, why is this important? We don't hear her admitting it from now. He, she turns and says, Sir, you're a prophet. You're speaking. You know, Nathan had to confront David. What David did, he didn't repent of. But when the prophet confronted, then it, he came to senses. Sometimes we have to be confronted. But the truth is, even David thought he was, he was worshiping the true and living God when the truth is, he was in sin so it was counterfeit worship follow me here as i begin to close because i want to leave this with you for next week it is possible to be involved in counterfeit worship it is possible to be coming to church and praying and you are truly have hearts that have not been rented ripped and believe that we're holy and we're loving. It's only a good father could point this out. It's only a good father could send Nathan to talk to David. It's only a good father could send Jesus to that woman and say, you don't know what you're worshiping. At the end of it all, he addressed the sin. He didn't jump into the doctrine straight away. He addressed the sin. But he also addressed the doctrine. Why is this important? Because we are going to begin to look at I can't tell you it's a series because I started with the book of Jude and if you go and you read Jude, very short book. It's talking about people that come into the church, come into the body of Christ and lead the church astray. And we are in a season where evil is called good and good is called evil. So what we are going to ask the Lord to help us to do is in an effort for us to understand God has called us to repentance but you can't overcome what you do not confront what if it's deep and hidden you have to cry out to God but you also need to understand that Satan is sending not just human beings forms of worship into the church that we are accepted who, who upload in a song and it's song in good and what's happening is there are people out there that are following these groups. And I'm not going to go into it today, but I need you to know. Blatant, blatant sin. But we in Trinidad don't know. But do you understand? We are allowing in forms of godliness that feel good. There are many ways that a saint could be deceived. Through wrong teaching, wrong doctrine, and we're going to be talking about that because... That's what we started talking about in Jude. But in the series, Calling Good Evil and Evil Good, I'm calling it a series, we need to understand, just like the woman at the well, we could be talking to people about doctrine and our lives are filthy. And it just didn't seem to register. But today, to whom much is given, much is required. We do not have an excuse. I want you to also understand that what's also happening with the young people. I can't show the clip now, I'm not gonna show it. There's a lot of stuff out there that they're accessing. And because it's coming under the name gospel, 
and rap and all these things, rap gospel and so forth, we are literally allowing our children to accept it. When you examine the words, the words are filthy. And this is coming from mega churches. But because you don't understand the words, and you know, you can't tell them everything, just leave them with it. Young people, I know there are very few of you here today. I'm not speaking about the young at heart. Parents talk about they want their children to serve Jesus, but they don't really always bring them into the sanctuary. But there are those here today. I want you to understand that you, the more you get accustomed to opening the door to the counterfeit stuff out there, be it in the form of music, be it in the form of so-called gospel, gospel um, stuff from some of these groups, some of these things that you're looking at TikTok. Somebody cannot gyrate on TikTok and tell me that they want to worship Jesus. They cannot. That's, what I, that's an example I give you. There are people that actually believe it's okay. They can gyrate down the place on TikTok and then talk about worshiping God. That's the same analogy as a woman by the well. Do you understand? These are people who really believe it's okay. They will perish if we don't tell them. But we've got to also have ourselves checked. So as I close today, I want you to understand. When we go back into the scripture about literally saying we are holy when we are not, because we don't even know what the words, if you are not reading the word regularly, you don't know what holiness is. That's the first thing. Second thing is, there must be the fruit of the Spirit. You must desire above all Jesus and Jesus alone. You can't isolate yourself. You don't have to be afraid, I'm going to get left behind. Because listen, if you're part of a community and you desire, God says, seek me, you will find me. You saw we tested everything, sift everything with the word. There's a work of the spirit. Change will come from the inside. But don't be so prideful to think everything you do is wonderful in God's eyes because it may not be. But he will still love you. But he will love you even as I am sure the grief on God's heart when he sees people going to hell. He doesn't stop loving them, but they have to go because they chose to walk in disobedience. I want you to know we can no longer have a flippant nature about God, his church, and the word. You know what a flippant nature is? I get to decide how I read the word, when I read the word, how I interpret the word, where I am, whether I come to church, whether I don't. You either do it his way or you... Do you understand? That's his way. I want us to understand too, parents who allow it, make excuses. You will be the cause of why your child will perish because you don't want to correct. And if you are correcting and they're not listening, get help. Because right now, there are mega pastors and churches that are allowing their kids to put out music out there. And many are following because they're children of the megas. Do you understand? And nobody's listening to the words. The words are so clear. These things are filthy. But nobody's listening. So Rev. Pichal is going to be talking more about counterfeit worship um, Counterfeit everything. Counterfeit evil, everything, good, and good, evil. I'm starting with, um, count, yes. Counterfeit worship. Yes, yes, And there's yes. one example that I want to give you where um, I was reading that apparently, and I've not heard it, but one of the most popular gospel Yeah, don't call any names. Songs, no, it's fact. Okay. It is. It's by NMM. M&M. Okay. M&M. M&M. Not the chocolates, but Who the cigars. That? <laughs> Who's that shortened for? M&M. He has the number one, I think, gospel song in America. Now, I don't want to be judgmental, but okay. the thing is, Here you know who Eminem is. Now, I would say, if maybe this is the start of a journey for him, but you look, we could judge from the fruit of his life. Yeah. And one of the things that he said because of this, um, this, this, worship song that he has that's now so popular in America is that he gives thanks to God for the talents that he gave him for his past work. Um, I'm not too sure. Yeah. I'm not too sure. What, <laughs> and what, well, what we want to let you all know, this is what you're saying. Is, because you're not going to keep them. Is this why the church, the Christ, that Christianity in America is projected to become the minority 
um, a minority group in the years to come? Are we so far off track of, and, and are we so now calling good evil and evil good? We, we, we are down here We too. have so many questions yeah. to ask. I will say this, and it's too and huge. And as I said earlier, mm -hmm. hopefully this is just at the start of a journey yeah. for his salvation, for his true salvation. Well, I'm so sorry we to pop your bubble, but <laughs> I just want you all to understand, we we're not we knocking pray. people. No. But we need you all to really take note of what you all are embracing and what you're listening in the form to. of anything. Do you understand? Because there are groups who it's written down what they're doing. There are pictures of them doing stuff. It just don't reach all you. Do you understand? You've got to be careful. You've got to understand it's not just the music. It's even what you're taking as a lot of, like, you know, we were in a, 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 a listening to some reputable churches yesterday. There were some of the leaders when, of course. And we heard the statements, the kind of people they want to bring down here. Our eyes open big. Because the, we don't already know is either they're Freemasons, because we know for a fact, because we've done research, or they're practicing stuff. But those are the people, because they sound so good and they draw a crowd. But when you examine some of what they've been saying, see, there's some of us, we go into the little research. We're not looking for a problem, eh? We go in. You're finding the phrases that are unbiblical. But you know when you're talking and you're going like this and boom, 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 and everybody and there's a whole big crowd, you understand? Nobody takes note of the little things that are being said. That's why I said, my sister, come, bring the word. Let's see who is talking here today. Because if it's not any word, we're not going to receive it. That's what we want. A lot of what they put out there is not biblical, but people don't know it. So you've got to get into the words. So I want you to understand that Rev has just opened a big hole in its nest. But we are wrapping up now. It's okay. Right? We cannot be flippant. There is, what has happened is that we have forgotten that Satan has come as an angel of light. And at the end of the day, a lot of God's word has been watered down. The worship has been defiled. And it is not impossible for us to be able to discern. You will begin to discern the shallow, repetitive music that's meant to hypnotize you. You will pick up on it because you will come to understand that that's the plan. To be able to come into the churches and don't come in an obvious way. So what am I saying here today? There are those who do what they do for ministry and there are those who do it for industry. Okay, ministry, don't, don't hope to get paid. It's not about money. Freely given, freely received, freely given. Industry, big money. Okay? You all hear what I'm saying? Amen. You're, listen, there's nothing wrong with talent, you know. And I'm not saying because a talented person is talented that they are demonic. But if you want to understand there's been a merge and we're mixing up ministry to draw souls, and industry to make it to the Grammy and company, etc., etc. Please, y'all. If Philip had to become a eunuch to reach the eunuch, that would have been unbiblical. Christ did not have to become an adulterer to reach the woman at the well. May the church not bow to Satan's schemes and ways in order to draw souls and lose their own soul in return. May that not happen. God bless y'all. I'm going to ask Minister Richard, pray for us. Pray for us. But don't leave out all the, the, or pray for all the members. Pray for them, please. Saints, what if we gain the world and use, lose our soul? We, we can't. We can't, and this is what this is about. And right now, the church is in many cases, losing their soul because they're calling good evil and evil good. Let's start with ourselves. Amen. God bless you.